welcome to episode 17 of .NET Concept of the Week, where I explain a concept related to .NET programming every week in a short video. This time I'm going to show you how you can add RSS feed to an ASP.NET Core application. The background story here is the following. I have a blog and as an overmotivated developer, I decided to implement the whole thing myself in ASP.NET Core instead of using a ready-made content management system. So I have this custom ASP.NET Core application and a couple of people asked me if the site has an RSS feed. Of course, originally I had no intention to offer an RSS feed and by using a CMS I would probably have had it out of the box. But I don't use a CMS, instead I have my own ASP.NET Core app, which means I had to learn about the details of RSS feeds, so in this video I will share everything that I learned about this topic. Probably most of you know what RSS is, but to make sure we are all on the same page, let's quickly talk about RSS a little bit, and then after that we will move on and see how we can implement it with ASP.NET Core. So RSS stands for really simple syndication, or read site summary and it is a relatively old technology. The goal of RSS is that readers who subscribe to an RSS feed get automatically notified when new content is uploaded to a website. The feed itself is basically an XML file, but before we jump into the technical details, let's see how it works on my website. This is my blog and I added an RSS feed button here. If we click it, then we end up on this page that shows all my blog posts and here we can also subscribe to the RSS feed. The other option is to use a dedicated tool to subscribe to the feed. This here is for example Feedly and with this you can subscribe to multiple RSS feeds. I simply paste the URL from my website and as you can see the tool is able to read it. Now why is this good? Because once I publish a new blog post then everyone who subscribed to the feed gets a notification so users don't have to actively check my website to see if I published something. Now let's see how this works. If we look at it in Firefox, then you may think that this is an HTML site, but it isn't. This is a simple XML file that describes the RSS feed. I link the RSS definition, so if you want to know all the details, feel free to check out the official RSS documentation. The point is that the whole thing is within an RSS tag, this one uses version 2 and we also use the Atom namespace. Within the RSS tag below the channel, we have the description of my website. This is the title of the feed. We have the link to my website and it also has a description. We saw all those both in Feedly and in Firefox. The last build date indicates the date and the time when this feed was updated. So this is the general description of the feed and then below that we have the items within the feed. One item in my case is one blog post. Nothing unexpected here, they have title, description a link to each post, the author and a publication date plus a GUID to uniquely identify each post. So client applications like Feedly can subscribe to this XML and then compare the last build date of the current XML to the last one that they have and then based on that they can notify the users if there is a new post. Alright, so this is RSS and now let's see how we can implement this in ASP.NET Core. To keep the sample code focused on RSS, we won't use my website in this video, instead I added a new project to the .NET concept of the week repository under the 17 underscore RSS in ASP.NET Core folder. As always the sample code is uploaded to GitHub and I link the GitHub repository in the video description. This is a very simple dummy ASP.NET Core application, it has 4 posts and basically that's it. We don't even have an option here to see the posts but that doesn't matter. What we are going to do is that we will implement an RSS feed to return this list of posts as an RSS feed. The data source is defined by the iBlock data storage interface and the dummy block data storage implements this interface. This has four static members. In a real world application you would have something like Entity Framework Core or an other proper data access library here, but for our discussion this is enough. In the startup.cs file I register those on the iService collection and from that point I can inject a dummy block data storage into my controllers. Then in the home controller I simply use it with dependency injection and pass the blog posts to the view in the index method. So when I go to the home page I see all the blog posts. Alright, now let's move on and implement an RSS feed. We have two options here, 
We can implement it within a middleware and we can also do it with MVC. Let's build our RSS feed with MVC. So for this, I simply create a new controller. I call it RSS controller and from the index method, we will return the feed. With this, the slash RSS URL will be automatically mapped to this method. So let's implement this thing. First of all, we want to return XML from this method. And for this, I add the produces attribute to the RSS controller and set it to application slash XML. We also have to register the XML serializer formatter. Otherwise, our ASP.NET Core app won't be able to make XML from the content. We can do this in the startup.cs file by calling the add XML serializer formatters method right after we add the MVC middleware to the pipeline. The next step is to implement the XML content itself. For this, I will use link you to XML from the system.xml.linkU namespace. First, I defined an X namespace for Atom, and then I will create the RSS tag itself, which is going to be an X element. I set version to two, and here I will also use the X namespace we just defined in the previous line. The next step is to define the channel tag, which is again an X element with a bunch of other X elements. I set things like title, link, description, and all those other things. One interesting thing is the last build date. I set this to the published date of the newest blog entry. This means that once the list of blog posts is updated with a new blog item, the published date of the RSS feed is also updated. Now after that, we iterate through the post and create an item tag for each post. Again, nothing unexpected here. We set the title, the description, the link, the author, and the published date. And we also generate a unique ID by combining the path of the entry with the published date. And that's it. After that, we add the channel tag to the root RSS tag, and then we return the whole thing as the result. With that, we are done. So let's test it. Here we are in Chrome. And as you can see, we have a proper RSS feed or at least it looks like a proper and valid RSS feed, but it's better to test it with a tool. For this, I simply deploy this small app to Azure. And once this is done, I go to this URL, which is by the way in the video description and put the URL of our feed from Azure into it and then click check. With this, you can make sure that the XML you created is a valid RSS feed. And as you can see, what we did looks good. We can of course also use the feed with Feedly as you can see, we have our title here and we also see all the posts. Similarly, it also works with Firefox. Now let's go back to the code and discuss one more thing. So previously I mentioned that adding an MVC controller isn't the only way to do this. We can also implement this thing in a middleware. Now for this, I created a small NuGet package. So I simply right click our project and select manage NuGet packages. I search for ASP.NET Core RSS middleware and as you can see, it's here. Currently, this is a pre-release package, so make sure you check the include pre-releases checkbox here. So with this, we can remove our MVC controller and in the startup.cs file, we can simply register the middleware by calling use RSS on the iApplication builder. This needs two parameters. The first one is the RSS description, where we can define the title and the description of the feed, and it has also some optional parameters. The other one is an IRSS item data source implementation. This interface has a single method which returns an I enumerable of RSS feed items. I create a dummy implementation here and I simply return dummy values. The RSS middleware will generate an item tag for each RSS feed item in the final XML. So I simply create an instance of my dummy data source and pass that to the middleware. And basically that's it. So if we start the application and go to slash RSS, we get the same result. As you can see, the RSS feed works. The middleware is open source. Here is the source code. I think there is nothing unexpected here. So instead of an MVC controller, we have a middleware here, which either passes the request to the next middleware, or it returns the RSS feed, depending on the path of the incoming HTTP request. What we see here is very similar to the MVC controller that we created before. The only difference is that we don't return a view here. We simply return the XML as an X element, and then we write it to the response with context.response.writeAsync. All right, so that's it. As always, the source code is linked in the video description. If you found this video useful, please hit the thumbs up button and make sure you also subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching, and next week, I will explain another .NET concept.